Ladies and Germans, how are you all doing? This is Kant Over coming to you with some more Company of Heroes 2 1v1 action. I want to get to the players real quick, but first let me say, guys, I am so happy to be back. I have uh, I apologize for not posting something yesterday. I mean, I got back on Sunday from my vacation, from my trip, um, and I was just so burnt out. I was so exhausted um, that, honestly, I didn't have anything for you, so I do apologize for that. But you know what? We're back. We're together. And it looks like you guys loved what I put up in the meantime last week. So thanks for continuing to show this channel some love, even when I'm not posting one per day. Well, let's get down to this game and this present, and we're going to kind of, you know, move forward together, right? So first down here in the south, playing the Wehrmacht, it is the blue-trunked forces of Joris WWU. Uh, on the opposite side from him, up here in the northwest, now apparently going to decide to go for that mobile assault regiment. It's going to be start with Debussy and with Debach. And I don't know how the heck he came up with that name, but I find it kind of fantastic. Obviously, he's playing the UKF, and he's starting off with a very, very super standard triple infantry section opening. The map itself is Famineville Approach, uh, which is always a fun one to actually check out. I mean, it's it's not often seen. I feel like a lot of other ones are seen a lot more. Culloden, for example. But Famineville doesn't get enough love as it should. Now, Joris has not picked his own particular um, troop choices just yet. Instead, he's focusing instead, excuse me, commander choices. Um, instead, focusing on suppressing and doing some real damage to these early, early infantry sections with grenadiers and machine guns. But what could he possibly bring to the fray? Of course, he's got mobile defense. <coughs> excuse me. Elite troops doctrine, as well as that Festung armor doctrine. Now, I would not... I'd be very, very surprised to see Festung armor. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting to see the Pack 43, the command tank, everything like that. But if I had to guess, my guess would be either one of these two. And it really depends how his early game goes. Because if Joris goes, gets really, really far behind early on, expect to see him probably fall back in mobile defense and just use call-ins for his um, Puma so he can maybe either leap, support armor, core, or perhaps, perhaps just skip both Tier 3 and Tier 4 buildings altogether and just stick on Collins. Excuse me guys, I might be coughing a tiny little bit. Um, I am completely healthy after my vacation, but at the same time, uh, there was a, a fair amount of talking, let's just call it, and uh, yeah, throat, throat's a little bit scratchy, so still getting back and into it. Early on, we are going to see that Joris has neglected to really go for any sort of VPs. He's losing tickets right now, but at the same time, he did have both fuel points line. under his control, even though one was not in supply. What that means is that this early, early expand for the Brits is heavily delayed. And in fact, you aren't even seeing him teching up to the command post itself, which is kind of surprising. He's at the fuel for quite a bit of time. Uh, it seems to be more concerned about just getting a lot of infantry out on the map, and I suppose that makes a little bit of sense. Nevertheless, Joris is down a lot in the early game in terms of just VP control. Uh, and before we get actually... Even further still, I know some of you guys are concerned sometimes about the quality of play. So let me tell you right now, the Busey and Ender de Bach, at least at the time of this recording, was in top 10, top 20 of Brit players. I think he was even as high as top 8 in recent months. There we go. And some cheeky sandbags actually keeping his, uh, keeping his opponent locked in the central part here. Usually you will see the Germans hop into this house and control it with a machine gun or something of that sort. Yikes, the north will see Grenadiers going to face off against the infantry section again. Grenadiers backing up their very, very wounded brethren. And in the end, reinforcements from both sides driving away other combatants. And the south Grenadiers locking down a garrison against the infantry section. And neither player still continues to be teching up. There we go, we're finally seeing a tech up from both sides. Germans a few seconds behind the Brits, I believe. Yep, the Brits have their uh, platoon command post out. But no tech into either that AEC or the Bofors. Now, I'd be extremely surprised to see the Bofors at this point. Um, in fact, I don't think I've seen a Bofors unless it was a 2v2 game. And that was oof, about a month ago, I guess, at this point already. And while the Brits have some fuel, the Germans, I think, have a slightly more robust infantry composition. Um, not to say that these pioneers are going to do too well against infantry section. Instead, you see them only sitting here trying to put fire into these sandbags and open this path back up for them to their troops to get back through this area. The problem with that is that it allows the Brits to catch them in a, a bit of a pincer flanking fire 
northern crew and the southern crew. Oh, but a rifle grenade, a cheeky rifle grenade coming out from over top. Takes out one model, almost takes out the entire squad, actually. Maybe another model goes down and retreats? No. No, that is not going to be the case. Joris, in the meantime, not being too, too active up here in the north. His own grenadier sliding in and around, perhaps to decap this munitions point and bring it over to the German control. And if nothing else, destroying this munitions cache would be quite a big win, I would say. Armored car construction to be ordered. And there is the requisition for the AEC. But the Germans are building up their Leichte Mechanized Company right now as well. Ooh, and pyrotechnic supplies unlocked. So this particular infantry section could have a lot of fun, either with the coordinated fire, uh, but not with the mill bomb, obviously, just yet. But that's good. I haven't. You don't often see a lot of coordinated fire being utilized by infantry sections, which is just way too bad, because it can be to take a point an extremely good way to either take out a garrison or to blow up some static positions from your opponent. It's six minutes in, Joris is down over 100 tickets already, which is very shocking for him. And bring in, both players bring in light vehicles, though. For the Germans, that 222. For the Brits, obviously, it's going to be that AEC. This machine gun, can he catch this guy into fire yet? No, he's going to be just out of range. He's going to get one burst of fire off. I don't think he's going to get him suppressed. No, he's not. Those guys scamper by just barely. Joris throwing down and upgrading that medic bunker, so now his troops can get a little bit healthier. Their health insurance is finally kicking in. Those HSA accounts doing work. Oh, and actually now I'm thinking about it too, uh, folks. A bit of a heads up. I know there is a new Dawn of War game coming out. Dawn of War 3. A marked difference from Dawn of War 2. Going back to a lot more of that um, macro strategic play. In terms of actually having massive armies firing back and forth. It is fully my intention to be running that game. Um, getting some multiplayer games of that going on as well as showing you some of the campaign so keep an eye over on my channel i think it's late april at this point i'm gonna double check that for you though 222 coming in and behind some royal engineers at the same time the aec announces its presence to the north and this royal engineers picked up an m2 flamethrower just in time to maybe put some fire literally into this machine gun unfortunately for the Germans, the machine gun, excuse me, unfortunately for the Brits, the Germans are a little bit more on the ball than that. AEC says, though, you know what? I don't care if you're there or not. I'm going to try to scamper around, put some more fire into your infantry here. And the 222 is unfortunately showing his his heels to his opponent. Um, but he might be able to pick off this munitions cache between, before too much longer. One more burst of fire should do it. He should be able to get out, though, if his AEC does not get another shot in. Yep, he gets away. Whew, that's close. <coughs> Even more frustrating, the Germans have just decapped the center strategic point, which has disrupted the British supplies for the time being. And they're doing their own decaps and recaps of the, uh, strategic, excuse me, of uh, victory points, finally slowing that VP drain down a bit but not before their own troops are getting slaughtered by the AEC as well as the British that are s sitting inside the garrisons galore. A second AEC is on the map even as Royal Engineers fall back in the face of just death and destruction. But now there's a Pack 40 out here and he's throwing rounds into the AEC. One backs away. He has no idea what, he can, be, what can be done under the um, circumstances here. We see a rush force maybe with a Panzerfaust. No, we're not. Instead, we're going to see Grenadiers fighting out of directional cover against an infantry section and some grenadiers here but have, do they even have they have, a, they have one line of fire don't they yeah one, one guy's gonna get shots out but it's not gonna do a lot of work and did you see him right now just the rich just slowly killing models off of the uh german troops but take heart everybody i have been told that the germans do not go quietly into the night they do not vanish without a fight because today while the rest of the world celebrates the July 4th, will be the new Independence Day. It will no longer be an American holiday. If you have any idea I'm not talking about, please let me know in the comments below. I'd be very, very happy to see some fanboys out there for the first one of these movies. Uh, in the meantime, though, Brits have both fuel points under firm control. Even if the Germans are trying to push back out, you see creating a new Battle of the Bulge. And another Pack 40 coming onto the field. That's probably a good thing. One pack redeploying facing to the north, the other one needs to come in and around to give this northern AEC nothing but guns to run towards. And dear God, 
Those guys just lost about 60% of their health in maybe 15 seconds at the absolute most. AEC is uh, going to be dueled with by the 222. 222 does not want to go and take that, that fight, though. Destroyed engine, so the crew is gone. And I don't think he's going to get out alive. I think that thing's going to die. But smoke comes in. He blows up that poor, poor wretched vehicle. I'm not too sure why he was charging in with a 222. But all right. Royal Engineers coming forward, throwing down mines galore. You can see both in the uh, right by the VP as well as the entrance into this house. Now Germans right now do not have any detection equipment. They have a flamethrower, but that's nowhere near the same thing now, is it? Now, I am a little bit concerned right now to see George playing as defensively as he is. He's got two pack 40s, but they're not doing much of anything. Though right now, we might see a couple of shots coming out. Yep, there's one rear hit right there. Gonna get another shot off, I think. Two even. Smoke comes out, but that smoke is going the wrong direction. One more shot. Oh, just goes barely left. And the infantry squad up here in the house gets burnt out. He is just not feeling the love anymore. He dies pretty darn quickly. And another cash coming out over here. There's another munitions cash. So Debussy is definitely looking, I would say, for some later upgrades on his Enemy infantry squads. And to be fair, throwing down some friends on his infantry at this point might be a great, great idea. Joris continues to not want to go to either Battle Phase 2 or a commander to call in some troops. Taking a quick look at his position right now, he is down 280 tickets at 12 minutes in. That's like a cop stomping an easy player. <coughs> I am hoping, of course, that I was not lied to with the replay on this one. I'm sure we're going to see a little bit more um, activity in the next minutes here. But let's think about his composition now and what the possibility will be. Pack 40 is throwing more rounds in, even as the infantry taking some hits from the AEC. Like I said, I don't see him going for Festoon Armor Doctrine. I mean, there's... I find anything that keeps your... Um, your armor in a single position, and yep, there's a couple of BA... Excuse me, uh, Brens coming out for the Brits. Anything that has your armor staying in a st stationary position outside of it being like an elephant is a waste of time and is really just a liability to me. Anyway. But looking at what he's got right now, he's got three spots of Grenadiers, so going for mobile defense doesn't seem like the best option. I would like to see him choose a Lightning War at this point. Those stun grenades as well as Jaeger Light Infantry and Stormies um, will give him a lot of flexibility if his Grenadiers do go down. And you can see one, right now one of them is going to take some real, real damage. Luckily, a machine gun is here to put fire down on the Royal Engineers trying to creep on forwards. Not quite able to pin him, though. And that's kind of a shock and a surprise and all right there. In the meantime, a third machine gun coming out. So Joris is starting to get confuse me a little bit. He is building a lot of static weapons play instead of doing something more aggressive with his units. I'm kind of hoping that he's not going to go quietly here. Right now, the Brits are running mean and lean with their army composition. Ooh, up in the north, what are we going to see? So we have a pack 40 clearly catching the, this AEC out. And I believe that was actually a Faust that took him out finally. So with that, the Bach really should be teching up into super late game here. I would think that calling into a um, company command post would be a great option here. Pack 40 is probably going to get taken out being caught out by two Bren squads is not where you want to be and he doesn't have any other infantry in the area nor does he have a, a light vehicle to help out his squads <coughs> Enemy infantry firing, little and yep there it is he's gonna get pinned down by taken out and we're gonna see oh no we're gonna see some commanders coming out to the south mine was exploded under the german feet it does seem even as the anti-tank gun gets um Picked off. Oh god, this is gonna be messy. Those port infiltration commandos. These guys are super, super good up close, but they are also incredibly fragile. No bomb goes out. It's gonna do a ton of damage. Decrews that entire machine gun, and that's just an unlucky, unlucky grenade. Nine times out of ten, that grenade won't do jack. 
or take off some health, but not take out the entire crew. But no, sir, not this time. Pioneers, in the meantime, coming out to the north, going to go and lay down some fire on top of this infantry section. And speaking in terms of veterancy, the Germans have a slight edge, I have to say, which is totally shocking for me, um, considering the way the map is actually looking. Oh no, machine gun's been taken. Rifle grenade goes out, can he save it? Yes, he does, but he takes out the machine gun in the meantime as well. Joris does decide to go for the elite troops doctrine. And the stun grenade manages to catch out part of the infantry section. And the Faust comes out as well. Uh, will we see the squad die though as Retribution? Not quite yet. And unfortunately the pack does not have line of sight anymore. So that guy is free and clear. But he ran over a mine! That was stupidly unlucky. So two AECs are down. That's the bulk of the um, allied punch here. Of course, the land matches on the field now. We could see some really, really devastating shots. And he blown thrown rounds into these trees, unfortunately. Looking and not going to be able to find... Oh, he's looking to take out the garrison, perhaps. He does manage to do so. It takes out one model on retreat from that machine gun crew. But um, rather underwhelming, all things considered. These trees apparently are German oaks. Maybe it's, the, maybe it's the Black Forest right there, but um, either way, it's not going to be a healthy, healthy opportunity. Ooh! Rifle Grenade goes out, and unfortunately for Start for Debussy, he does not see that happen. Joris doing something, an excellent, excellent idea. Moving his squad in to get line of sight, just so you know where your target is, and throwing a blind Rifle Grenade. In the middle part of the field here, we will see that this Royal Engineer squad is going to, going to draw fire as the infantry section does manage to decap out that VP. Um, they do pay the price for it though, of course. They take a little bit of damage and are forced back. Grenadiers in the meantime, he's just trying to creep his way to his Tiger Ace because that is a very, very long time to wait. We we'll certainly hope not anyway. Infiltration commandos coming in and around. They're going to take out this machine gun crew if there's no assistance. But here's a Pioneer squad. Oh my, the defense in depth. Brilliant. Defense in depth. And now these guys are completely and totally exposed. They're pinned down. And we have the machine gun coming right back up over here. Oh no, no, guys. There is a support armor core, which means we're going to be seeing a P4 coming out right now. Which is good because that Tiga is is not going to be coming in four days, mind you. Four days. And Debussy is doing one big mistake, though. He is not teching up. He should have been teching up a long time ago. His infantry had the field. He had control of resources. And now all of his guys are clumped up instead of him having an opportunity to be calling in either a, oof, maybe a Cromwell. Heck, even a Centaur at this point would be good. You know how you, you, you all out there know how I feel about Centaurs. A wastes of space and steel. Grenadier Squad, though, throwing another rifle grenade. And doing tons of work, doing incredible, incredible amounts of damage. Well, luckily for the Brits, though, they don't lose any spots on retreat. This machine gun might get taken out. Infiltration commanders are trying to charge in to push back. The pioneers will be able to do so. Be another bomb? No, it's not going to be. Um, but getting some friendly fire as well from the land mattress. That's a little bit unfortunate. Even more unfortunate is right now we're going to see a big stun happening on top of this land mattress. And that's a dead crew right there. Rifle grenade not going to be able to be thrown in just yet. Would have been brilliant if you could take it out. But here comes Pack 40 and the P4. So finally we're going to see a 6-pounder coming out for the Brits. But that might be too late. Then again, Debussy has so much time though. He's only barely losing health right now. He's lost his first tickets for the, for the entirety of this game, actually. And this poor AT gets taken out. Um, he had a fair amount of veterancy, but uh, it seems that is not going to be the case after all. But it really, really lucky for George to be able to throw down around and take out, manage to take out this Royal Engineer crew. And we're just going to see you know, a couple of rounds coming out instead, and it's not going to do a whole lot. But uh, P4 doesn't have a whole lot to worry about at the moment. Six Pounder is on the field now, but he's coming forward. He hasn't quite made it just yet. His first rounds are going to come out, which will take 
some real damage out of said Panther IV. Well, he took out the Land in return, and that is still a very much a net gain for him. Infiltration Command is taking a ton of firepower, and they go down. Six pounds throw rounds into the P4, though. Again, the question is, will he be able to make it out alive? Yes, both the machine gun and the P4 back up. And the M6 mine's completed. Where is that? Oh, up here in the north. Okay. Okay, so Debussy was doing really, really well, but not taking up at all is really hurting him here. I don't know if he's just tunneling in the wrong direction or what the deal is. But losing a bunch of squads in very, very short order. He's just crumbling in every direction. Our capture point. They're trying to take it. And really, the reason he's falling down is um, his lack of technology right now. Grenadiers to the north, where are they getting pinned down? Oh, they ran across that mine. Those poor, poor bastards. Uh, Germans do have a fair amount of fuel coming in. Brits are still out producing them in terms of resources. The point's taken and and the, the Pack 40 has been seized. The uncrewed Pack 40 has been seized by the Brits. <clears throat> and a sniper being called in by Joris, a super late game sniper. Interesting development. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you in just a second. One is because, honestly, snipers are way more effective the earlier you have them. They slow your entire opponent's um, technology gain down by quite a bit on... Oh, dear God, here come howitzer fire. Fire, boys. Any second. No? No fire? There we go. And the house of Pooh Corner takes a round, and those guys, yep, that surviving Grenadier decides it's time for him to book it out. And huzzah, we're going to see Ostvind instead of a sniper. That's a good call right there. I'd rather have an Ostvind any day of the week and twice on Thursdays. But the Germans are almost down to just 100 tickets. The question really is, can Joris manage to get enough done with these later game vehicles. I'm surprised also this machine gun's not firing. They can see each other. I know they can. Super surprised that we're not seeing that there. Enemy causing trouble, trying to take one of our points. <coughs> the Germans are down almost 300 tickets. They really shouldn't be. They should be taking back the entire map right now. Finally, there we go. Put some fire down on top down of to this infantry section here. P4 also in the area. And the Bren gun can't do much against that thick, thick armor. And finally, there we go. The Germans are seizing back all these positions. And finally, Debussy is also deciding to go for that company command post. But it's almost 23 minutes into the game. In fact, it will be 23 minutes into the game any second here. He's starting to drop squads like crazy. Flag Panzer comes on in, and of course, you know how that guy does. He scampers in, he throws a couple rounds down, and infantry sections evaporate. Now, taking a look at these Enemy six counter and attack 40, neither one has any sort of veterancy, which means that that, what is it called? Rapid maneuvers? That's, that's one thing right there. That's pretty darn good. Ooh, Royal Engineers have been stunned, which means these Grenadiers can do some real damage not coming under fire in return. This pack 40 here, this bad boy, not going to happen either. Enemy causing trouble. And just like that, the Germans points. have an army that is almost double the size of their opponent, of which the opponent has really just two main squads of infantry on the line. Now, I'm not saying this would be a brilliant call, but it could be kind of interesting to drop some infiltration command, excuse me, stormtroopers, infiltra infiltration commandos are over here, but drop some stormies back over here, scamper out behind a retreating squad, or if nothing else, take out this munitions cache, because Debussy has just been abusing that like crazy. And Royal Engineers coming in to just kind of throw down their little destroy cover bit. And why the heck not, you know? It's just completely totally free. And I don't know if he's trying to just open up areas for his tanks or what. But you don't see this often enough. So I don't know if the Busey is just kind of... I, I, I don't know what he's doing. We'll figure that out in a second, though. Um, he has decided to go for that specialization into Hammer. I do like the fact that he's not going pushing hardcore right now because he doesn't have to. He's got plenty of tickets. He's got plenty of time. But it seems like he's just trying to open up fields of fire potentially for his anti-tank guns. You do see these guys right now have very little in their way. 
neither the pack 40 nor the six pounder. And if I'm Joris, though, I'm wondering to myself, where is everybody? I'm really wondering that. Stug being called in, um, and I'm not sure that's really the best call at this time, but I guess you want to have another tank on the line just in case your opponent goes for something a little heavier. And since you haven't seen any late game tanks, your first assumption is probably going to be that the first UKF is a, in fact, a Comet. Then again, if you haven't seen any um, fuel whatsoever, you might be thinking to yourself, maybe an opponent just does not want to play any sort of actual tank play. <coughs> and you can see that supposition bearing out in George's decision to build a second Ostvind. Not the best idea in my mind, but interesting decision nonetheless. Mine coming down to the north to defend these anti-tank guns from a flanking run by the P4, by an Ostvind. And how much longer is it until he can get one of those things like a Comet? Well, he can a Firefly right now. He's not going to, though. He's going to go for that Comet. There we go. That first Comet coming out in a short bit. Uh, but he's really got to do some other stuff, too, like get more infantry onto the field. Or get even some weapons teams onto the field. Um, not saying a best option would be something like a Vickers, but it might not be a bad thought after all. And maybe, just maybe, think about putting down like a mortar pit. Right behind your anti-tank gun. That could be kind of an interesting thought. Um, especially in a Feminville approach, it will control the garrison here. or control, for the most part, this entire intersection. And there we go. Between the machine gun and the Ostvin, those guys decide intelligently it's time to get out of dodge. Anti-tank guns, though, do announce their presence, and the first Ostvin is taking some real damage here. Wrote this around for some more cinematic shots. P4 is slotting it behind, however, and between rifle grenades and tanks, the British position seems rather hopeless, and they decide to fall back. You now have a new Comet tank. I thought the 25-pounder howitzer would be more than enough to take out this garrison, but it seems he keeps dropping rounds. This last one should do the trick, though. Skadoosh, there we go. And Pirate Technic Supplies does some damage, but just maybe perhaps not enough as needed. It is unfortunate that Joris is not able. Okay, how many rounds fire? A ton. Um, Joris is not able to bring in his Tiger Ace, and that's probably the one small spot of good luck. For starts with Debussy. Uh, mostly because if there was no Ostvin and instead there was a Tiger tank, especially a Tiger Ace, you are screwed seven ways to Sunday. Um, even with a Comet on the field. So what we might see is we might see perhaps an Ostvin go down. And almost in exchange, we see a Tiger Ace coming out and, and instead. Yeah, 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 anti tank guns are always trying to kill you, bro. And the Panther is coming out, excuse me, Panther's coming on in. And not quite able to put some fire onto that Pack 40. <coughs> but between the P4s and the Ostvins, we just see a lot of British material starting to get cut to pieces. Six Pounder is down. One infantry section is already dead. P4 goes down, and we already have a Tiga Ace coming out to the field as well. So, again, this Black Panther goes down, who cares? Not going to be a big deal. Uh, Debussy has no infantry left. He's got just this one Royal Engineer squad that's got any kind of health whatsoever. And these guys are just standing here. Um, and now there's a Bren down on the field as well. So, if you are Joris, Yuki has some real, real nasty stuff done. But there is this gorgeous Tiga Ace coming out, and he has just, of course, Pop Blitzkrieg tactics. Uh, he's going to come in and around onto this Comet, and this Comet has to know he's dead. Skadoosh, he's gone, and now we have three supplies left. And yep, Debussy realizes it's time to throw in the towel. You can see that happening right there. He's been replaced by an AI. And that is it, folks. That is game. Joris, despite going down a crazy amount of tickets, ends up pulling out the win in the end by just playing static long enough to get some late game vehicles. He was assisted by the fact that Debussy had decided to not go for a later game tech, a mistake that certainly, certainly cost him the game. I'm trying to imagine how much easier it might have been if he had called in a comment seven, eight minutes ago as opposed to three or four. Nevertheless, end score, 
78 take us to 232. We finally find ourselves with an Axis victory. I know some of you guys out there are complaining about that. How the Allies always seem to win and the Axis doesn't seem to pull their weight at any point. There you go, folks. I gave it to you. <laughs> of course, though, as always, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I appreciate all the, the support you give this channel. I love doing this for you guys. I don't get paid to do it. I wish I did. That'd be fantastic. But um, thank you so much, guys. I'll see you all soon. This is Con Ulrich signing off. Take it easy, everybody.